Hi everyone. Welcome to my weekly Facebook live um, Wednesday afternoon. I'm glad to be back to my normal time now that I don't have any scheduling conflicts. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I have the cutest little treat box to share with you guys today. I'll give you guys a little sneak peek and then we'll talk about it in a minute. This is what we're going to make today. Isn't this cute? Now it's a pretty big treat box, but I'm going to show you what's inside and it's super cute. So we're going to make this in just a second. But before we do, let me just talk to you guys for a couple minutes about a couple of special things that are coming up. Um, or, you know, some of you have started to receive your April paper pumpkin. There was a shipping delay. They shipped late. Um, mine is has shipped. It's on its way to me. As soon as it comes, I will go live in my VIP group to show it off. Um, it's super cute. I've already seen it. I think it's impossible not to see sneak peeks, but it's super cute. I cannot wait to get it. Next month's paper pumpkin kit, May's paper pumpkin, is going to be baseball themed. If you have baseball fans in your life, or if you love baseball, this is going to be a phenomenal kit. So make sure you subscribe by May 10th. You have until May 10th to subscribe to this kit. It is going to have nine cards and coordinating envelopes. Um, and it's going to just be baseball themed, all-star themed, MVP themed, all that kind of fun, sportsy kind of themed. But I am so excited about this. I think my... Um, my husband might actually really like this kit. I think my son might really like it. Um, and this is just a good... Baseball, I think, is pretty timeless. I think it's just a great kit to have. So, subscribe by May 10th. you got to have that subscription by May 10th if you want that baseball kit. All right. We are kind of wrapping up this annual catalog. This is our catalog that is retiring. Lots of products in here retiring. Make sure you shop that last chance list. Get discounts on lots and lots of different items are discounted. This one is wrapping up on May 3rd. The last chance you're going to get to order retiring products is on May 3rd or while supplies last. And items are selling out, guys, so don't wait to put in those orders. All right, this one, this is our new catalog. This is coming May 4th. I did put a bunch of catalogs in the mail on Monday. So if you are not a local customer of mine, you're out of the Albuquerque area, but you do still order for me, I threw that catalog in the mail on Monday for you, so hopefully if you haven't gotten it yet, you will be getting it within the next day or two. If you are local in the Albuquerque area, um, I am still getting catalogs, people. I am I had to wait on another catalog shipment to come in, but I am getting those catalogs out. So if you are local in the Albuquerque area and you would like a catalog, please, please let me know. Um, also from that new catalog, I am doing a paper share. There are some amazing new designer series papers in that catalog, so make sure that you check out that paper share and there's a link in the video description to head to that paper share blog post. You can see everything you need to know about that paper share cost, how to sign up for it, like all of that. Make sure you sign up for that paper share. Okay guys, another sneak peek. Isn't this cute? This is the box we're making today. We are using a brand new stamp set. This is called Party Puffins. This is so cute. These are not penguins. These are puffins. Puffins are a different kind of bird than penguins. Um, but they are so, so cute. So we're going to make this little box with them today. Now there is no dies or punch that goes with these. So you do have to fussy cut them. We'll be fussy cutting our little images. But it works, guys. They're not too hard images to cut, so you can do it. So what is inside of our sweet little box here? Ah, I have little Krispy Kreme bites. These come in a lot of different flavors. This is the chocolate flavor, but I've seen them in just the plain like glazed flavor, just the plain donut flavor. Um, and I think I've seen them in other flavors too. I'm not sure. We check your local supermarkets. They're there. So this is how they come. You get a, the box has five of these um, packs in them. So pretty, it's a pretty good deal. So you can um, make a bunch of little gifts with these all at once. So this is what we're going to make. Now, this is a pretty big it's a pretty big treat. You don't have to fit this in there. Obviously, uh, this could fit a number of different things, and you could always modify the size if you wanted to fit, fit something smaller. But this is the the size we're making. This is the box we're making, and it takes nearly a full sheet of cardstock. So let's get let's get that going. I'm using Pacific Point, and it is eight and a half by ten and a half. So all I've done is cut off half an inch on the long side. All right, let's get out our simply scored. And do some scoring. Remember, if you need to order any supplies, you can shop using that host code. I appreciate everyone who online shops with me, and I always have special gifts for you. So you can check out the April news link that's in the video description as well to find out what is going on this month. All right, on the eight and a half inch side, 
We are going to score it two and a half at four, at six and a half, and at eight. All of these measurements are in the video description and they will be on my blog tomorrow. So don't worry about having to jot these all down. They are ready to go. Now on the 10 and a half inch side, we're gonna score at one and a half and eight and a half and 10. And that's it. Simple score lines. We're not doing any funky scoring or anything, just simple score lines on our paper. Now we're gonna do some stamping before we burnish everything. And if you wanted to do the stamping before you did all the scoring, you could also do that as well. So I have on my little box, tons of little stamped candles. This is obviously a little birthday box. So if you were making this, maybe not for a birthday, maybe you just stamp something else on the side or on, um, on the base of the box, we are going birthday theme. So I'm gonna get that candles out of that Party Puffin stamp set. I'm gonna use Pacific Point ink on Pacific Point cardstock and I'm gonna grab some scrap paper just in case I go off the edge here. And I'm just going to stamp this all over. Now this is our bottom down here. The side, this side has two score lines. This side has one. This is our bottom. I am not worried at all about that bottom. Um, and I'm keeping my paper in a landscape mode. You could also make this so that the box is vertical. And in that case, you just wanna turn your candle stamp just so that they stamp right side up and not sideways. Okay, this just takes just a second, but I think it's worth it because this box is so big, you really wanna have something to kind of break up all of that blue on this box. And we're really only covering the front, we're only decorating the front, so having that, um, all the stamping I think is really, really helpful. And you see that I'm, I'm not being real careful about this. I'm just kind of stamping and it's really just to create a background. And I'm going off the paper too. When I come to an edge, I'm making sure to go off the edge. Um, and that's just gonna keep it from looking real boxy and it's gonna give it a more seamless look like it was cut from a larger piece of paper. All right, we are almost there. A couple more. Okay, I think one more right here, perfect. So I just covered that whole sheet with our Pacific Point. We're done with this ink. So I'm going to set that aside. All right, now we're ready to do some folding and burnishing. So with your bone folder on all of the score lines, just give it a good, give it a good fold. And there's a little bit of trimming that we're going to do, but not a whole lot. And it's pretty easy trimming, so we can do it. We are going to start on the bottom here. So, like I said, the, the side with the two score lines, that's going to be your top, that's going to be your lid. The bottom is the side with with only that one score line. So we're going to turn it horizontal. And I'm gonna, actually going to turn it over just so I can see these score lines a little better. There's a half inch side here that we are just going to cut right out. And I'm just notching that in just a little bit. All right, now... If you've watched me make boxes before, this is basically the same way. We're gonna cut up at an angle on the squares and we're gonna leave the rectangles nice and straight. The little square tabs are gonna get folded in so nobody's ever gonna see those little square tabs. So those are the ones we wanna kinda hack in and just kinda debulk. And when you just, when you take out that little piece, um, just taking out that score line really helps your boxes fold together much more cleanly. Okay, so that's all we did to the bottom. These were just cut up straight and then our little tabs we just notched in. Okay, so moving to the top, we're gonna take out this area too. This little half inch tab here. Nobody needs that. All right, now we're gonna figure out which way is gonna be our front. So with this in the back, this piece is gonna be the front. This piece is gonna be the part that folds over. So this is the one we want to save. So I'm just going to cut straight up on that score line just to kind of free it from the little tabs. Now once we get to these little tabs, I'm going to actually cut them in half. I don't want them quite that big. Now if you want them to be super straight, you can go ahead and put them in a paper trimmer. 
I'm really not too concerned because this box is going to have donuts in it. And whoever gets this box will not be talking about the little tabs. I promise. All right, now over here on this little tab, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to um, cut it in half, but we don't need this big piece right here. So we're going to cut this piece completely off. Okay. We'll take that off and then we're just going to kind of eyeball this to look like the other one. And we're just going to cut in just like that. Okay. So I'm going to lay this flat so you can see what it looks like. I hope I can get it all on camera. So let me hold it, hold it this way where our candles are going straight up. So we took off that half inch little tab here, notched in on the two tabs. This is going to be our, our lid that folds over and then we took out that one completely. Okay, now for our little tab here, I just wanna round those corners. So I'm gonna get my detailed trio punch and just round those corners. You need whatever corner rounder you like. And that is our box, that's it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'm gonna use tear tape for this. We are gonna put a big piece along this edge right here on that half inch tab. And then we're going to put it on the inside piece of our front. So I'm just gonna put a little piece just right on the edge here. And I'm going close to the edge of the cardstock opposed to down by the fold. That'll just keep it closed. All right, so now that we have our tear tape on, we're gonna peel that off and just fold that up. Fold in our sides right here. Our bottom will fold right up, and then our top will fold right in, just like that. Isn't that fantastic? It's a simple box, but it packs a really big treat. All right, guys, we're gonna start decorating, okay? So let me close that one back up. We're gonna start with our stamping. Let me grab, hang on one second. I had to grab um, something to drink. I, the allergies here in New Mexico are like strangling me this week. I don't know what is going on. So forgive my scratchy voice. All right, we're going to do some stamping. I just have a scrap piece of white here. And we are going to stamp on with our, hold on one sec. Okay, just want to make sure I had all my right supplies. We're going to stamp our little puffin and we're actually gonna stamp two cakes. You can see that I have a three layer cake here, but our cake only comes in two layers. So we're actually gonna stamp that one twice. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with that one. So let's start with our little puffin. Here we go. I'm gonna make sure to ink him up really well because he's got a lot of black space on here. And so I wanna make sure that that stamps nice and cleanly. If you um, are worried that you're not gonna get a good impression, Use the Stamparatus because you can go over it multiple times, but I did just re-ink my pad, so I think we're good. Good. And then we're going to stamp two cakes. All right, we are only going to use the top half of that one because you'll see the bottom did not stamp so well, so make sure to get a good bottom impression on this one. All right. We're going to do some coloring. Now, I'm using a ton of blends. <laughs> The list of blends is crazy, especially for something that is mostly black and white. So we're going to start with um, pumpkin pie. This is going to be for his feet and part of his beak. Now I did Google what a puffin looks like. I had a pretty good general idea, but I wanted to make sure to get his beak right. So I'm actually going to start with the, the dark pumpkin pie. And I'm going to just do his little feet. And then with the light pumpkin pie, I'm just going to just blend that out. His feet are pretty easy. The darker points are just going to be kind of up his legs and along the bottom where it's going to cast more shadows. So that is his little feet. Right now his beak, this very front part is orange. Well, it's kind of all orange, but this is more orange. So just the kind of bottom tip of it. And then I'm just going to blend that up. It's going to be lighter on the top of his beak and darker on the bottom. Just like that. Okay. That is it with our pumpkin pie actually I am going to we're gonna do the top of this one so I'm just gonna use my light pumpkin pie and color in those flames all right 
that is it with our pumpkin pie. For the rest of his beak, I'm going to pull in the new pale papaya. This is a new in color coming in the new catalog. You can order from that May 4th or if you love these products, you want to get the new products now, you can put them in your starter kit. All right, so I just did the dark just on the top and the bottom of his beak. And then I'm just going to fill this in with the light. And just like that. So it's more of a, a yellowy orange on the back of his beak. All right. See, cruising right along. All right, let's pull in some colors for his hat. So first hat, I'm going to use Daffodil Delight and Poppy Parade. We're going to start with the little dots on his hat. So dark Daffodil Delight. All the left side, I'm just going to make darker. So just kind of, these are small images, so you really don't have to do a lot of blending. But we're just doing just a tiny bit of blending. It just really adds so much life. Okay, so there's his little dots. We're just going to come in with the Poppy Parade. And again, just on the, the left side is going to be a little darker. So I'm just taking the dark and just going down the left side of his hat. So puffins, do you guys know, I have been told this by my son, that the island where they filmed um, some of the last Star Wars movies, I don't, don't ask me which ones, um, but the ones with the porgs, they filmed on an island that was full of puffins and they could not get rid of the puffins. And so the Star Wars people just computer generated, generated all the puffins into porgs. So thus, the Porg was born. So, I don't know if you guys knew any of that Star Wars trivia, but um, Porgs are basically just computer um, modified puffins. All right, now I'm taking my light gray granite and I don't want his belly and his face to look stark white. So all I've done is just go around the left side of his face and then around his belly and um, just his bottom down here. And we are going to use our color lifter and I am just going to just kind of go in circular motions right over that, that gray granite and just kind of blend that out. So it's going to, it's going to add shadow to his, to the white spots, but it's not going to look gray. All right. So our puffin is all colored. That is it. That's all for the puffin. Now we have to color our, our cake. So I'm going to start with crumb cake. And we are going to be, like I said, we're going to be cutting up this, this cake. So we're going to use both layers from, let's see, we're going to use both layers from this cake. So it's going to go on top and then we're only going to use the bottom layer on this cake. So let's see if I can remember that. So the bottom layer from this cake, I'm taking dark crumb cake for the top of the icing and I'm just going around the top and then we'll do both layers here. Okay. My um, son is a huge Star Wars fan, so needless to say, we like porgs in this house, or we like puffins in this house because they are just porgs in disguise. All right, so I'm just taking my light and I'm just blending that out so the um, icing will be darker on top and then it just gets a little lighter as it goes down the cake. Now for the cake, you can really make the cake whatever color you want. Um, I really wanted to go for a lighter cake on this one. So I'm actually using Petal Pink, which is kind of an unusual color for a cake. But um, we're going to we're gonna make it look really appetizing. So for the dark on the left side, I'm just going in with the dark. And just um, coloring like half of it. Half of it with the dark, just like that. Then I'm going to come in with the light circular motions to just blend it out and I'm just going to fill in the rest of the cake with the light petal pink. Now I thought this looked a little too pink. It almost started to look like a wedding cake. It was so pink. So I'm going to come in again with my light creme cake and just kind of just go over a little bit on the on the left side and then under the icing. Just like that. And this is really just going to give it more of like a like a home cooked cake fill. I'm just going to go back in with my light petal pink and just blend out that crumb cake. That's really going to add lots of fun shadow to that cake. Just give it a real more like realistic look. Isn't that cute? All right. I'm going to have to grab my um, 
poppy parade again because I just realized I did not do the candles. So just the dark poppy parade, some candles, and then all we have left is the little plate here. So for the plate, I'm going to use some light Night of Navy and then some um, dark balmy blue. We don't have Pacific Point blends, so we're going to kind of make Pacific Point with um, Night of Navy and balmy blue together. So starting with the light Night of Navy, I'm going to color the left side and the right side of the plate. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with my balmy blue and just kind of go over that and fill it in. Now it's not going to be an exact match to the the Pacific Point, but we're going to be pretty darn close. And we're just going to fill that in just like that. And that is all of the coloring. Isn't that cute? Now, remember I said there were no dyes, so you would fussy cut these. But through the magic of television, guys, we have already fussy cut them. Um, so you'll see that for the cake, I've cut out the top portion of the cake, just cut off the plate. And then for this one, I just left that, that top layer so that we have room to glue the cakes on, but I cut out that plate. Okay, so we're gonna use two, both cakes. I will save those, I will fussy cut those later. In the meantime, we're gonna make our cake. So I'm gonna just use some liquid adhesive, that's a lot, <laughs> came out generously. And we're just gonna stack this cake right on top, just like that. And now we have a three layer cake, isn't that sweet? So we have all our pieces, we are ready to assemble this box. So let's get assembly. All right, I have a piece of Poppy Parade DSP. This is from the Brights DSP collection. This is the new patterns. You see the, the patterns on one of these? These are phenomenal DSPs. They'll be in all the color groups. So I'm going to use my Banners Pick-A-Punch on one side. We're going to do the pointed end. On the other side, we're going to do the, the little bannered end, just like that. So that will give us... Our little banner and this was this piece of DSP was one by six so I just cut a one inch um, strip off of that all right another punch we're using the label me lovely punch this is one of my favorite punches we're gonna punch that out in poppy parade and I think that's all of our pieces we have a I have a stitched um, rectangle here that I just die cut with a stitch rec rectangle dies and I have our greeting piece so let's go ahead and stamp that greeting piece real quick and I'm just using Poppy Parade ink for that. So I'm gonna ink that up and stamp this down. Hopefully it's nice and straight. Oh, pretty good. It's, a, it's hard to stamp greetings on a small piece of paper. I know that. And um, I couldn't get right over it. Okay, so we're gonna cut this into a banner into. So I'm just gonna feed this into my punch. And I think I just want a little bit closer to the edge here so all right perfect there we go so we have our greeting we have our all of our pieces so let's get to assembling so let me pull this in so we know what we're making all right we're going to start with our our little puffin and his cake i'm going to use some dimensionals for him now his hat and his feet are going to hang off so don't put dimensionals there just kind of stick them on the middle of his body Gonna hang off of that white piece a little bit. And we're going all the way to the edge here. Let me just figure out where our cake is going. I think that'll be good. I want the cake to kind of hang off the edge a little bit. So I'm actually just gonna grab an edge piece here. Just stick it right on the edge of my stitched rectangle. And we're just gonna stick our, our cake right on it. So cute. Now before we go much further, you just use my Wink Estella just to add some glitter to those flames and the icing. I like to do that after it's assembled onto whatever piece it's going on, or even just at the very end, but so cute. So that's probably not gonna show up well in the video, but that glitter just really adds lots of fun. All right, new ribbon, guys. This is the um, Pale Papaya ribbon. This ribbon will come in all of our new in colors. So you can get this multiple in colors and we're gonna I'm going to attempt to tie a bow Ugh. I'm not sure why I do this to myself I'm not sure I left myself enough ribbon we'll see we'll see so I just want a small little bow just right on the top here 
felt like it just needed a little something. So let's see. I really should have, I should have cut more ribbon. All right. Can I make it work? We'll see. You know what? Let's just do more ribbon. I told you guys that I cannot cut off, I can't tie ribbon on the spool. I know that that's the best way to save ribbon, but I can't do it. It, um, I just end up making a huge mess. I tie myself up in knots and all right. So I'm just gonna tie this. This ribbon is so soft and delicate. I really, really love this ribbon. Okay, so we have our bow. We're just gonna kind of finagle it a little bit. There we go. Just make it a tiny bit smaller. We don't want the bow to be the focal point here. This is really just to add a little bit of extra something. All right, move all this ribbon out of the way. Don't worry, that other piece I have a plan for. I'll use it for a different project, don't worry. All right, so we have our piece here. We're gonna stick our greeting on. This is gonna go right on top here. The left side's gonna hang off a little bit. So I think I'm just gonna cut a dimensional in half. And we'll just stick that on here. Adhere it down, adhere down that ribbon so it doesn't come apart. Get off those backings. This will just go on just like that. Isn't that sweet? Okay. Now we have our, our, what is that called? Label me lovely punch. Now you'll see that if I just put it on here, it's too small. So we are actually going to cut it in half. Okay. And let me grab my stamp and seal. And I'm going to put a little bit on each of these. Just like that. And then... We'll just line these up top here and on the bottom. And that will give us, that's really expanding that layer, making that punch a little more double duty. You can flip it over, just kind of see if you're straight on either side. So if you're right across and there you go. That is our, our big tag that's gonna go on the front. All right, I have my DSP here. I'm gonna stick that on. I'm gonna pull in our box here. This is just gonna go right on the front, just like this. And then our whole little piece here, we're gonna stick down with dimensionals. So let's get a few dimensionals here. And that will, once we can get these dimensionals off. So our dimensionals and ribbon are my nemesis as soon as that camera starts running. This is just gonna go right on our little box, just like that. All right, so there you have it. Isn't that adorable? What a super sweet little treat. It's full of donuts. Who wouldn't love that? This would be great to leave on the desk of a coworker on the morning of their birthday or something, or a teacher. That would be super sweet, super, super cute and sweet. Um, okay, so I hope you guys love these party puffins. Now, if you are not a member of my VIP group, make sure you join my VIP group because on Friday morning at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, I will be going live with one more party puffin treat. Isn't that cute? It holds little goldfish crackers. Isn't that cute? So if you want to learn how to make this super cute um, little treat, make sure you join my VIP group. I will be going live 10 a.m. on Friday morning, um, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. So I left a link for my VIP group in the video description. So make sure you join my VIP group. All right, guys, I hope you love this project. Make sure you um, shop my online store with this house code. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys on Friday in my VIP group or next Wednesday right here on my Facebook page. Bye, guys.